Good morning. Today we are going to introduce another equation for the force of gravity, or weight, of an object. Flippin' physics. However, before we do, Bobby, please remind us, what is the equation we already have for the force of gravity, or weight, of an object? Force of gravity equals m times g. Bobby, please remember to say what the variables mean, not just their letters. Sorry. Uh, force of gravity equals mass times acceleration due to gravity. I'm going to add a subscript which has, up until this point, been assumed. The force of gravity is equal to the mass of the object times the acceleration due to gravity. In other words, this is the force of gravitational attraction which exists between an object near the surface of a planet and the planet. Typically for us, the planet is the Earth, with the acceleration due to gravity equal to 9.81 meters per second squared. In fact, it turns out there is a force of gravitational attraction between any two objects. The equation to determine this force of gravitational attraction between any two objects is Newton's universal law of gravitation. And the equation is the force of gravity equals big G, or the universal gravitational constant, times the mass of object 1 times the mass of object 2, all divided by r squared. The universal gravitational constant, or big G as I like to call it, is an experimentally measured number and has an accepted value of 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 newtons times meters squared over kilograms squared. Mass 1 and mass 2 are the masses of the two objects which have the force of gravitational attraction between the two of them. And now let's talk about the R in this equation. Please, class, repeat after me. R is not the radius. R is not the radius. R is the distance between the centers of mass of the two objects. R is the distance between the centers of mass of the two objects. So, R is not defined as the radius. The definition of R is that it is the distance between the centers of mass of the two objects. This can be confusing because sometimes R actually works out to be the radius. However, R is not defined that way. R is not the radius, but sometimes it is the radius? Sure, R is not defined as the radius. However, there must be situations where R works out to be the radius. I wish they used a different letter for R because that is confusing. Me yeah. too. I totally agree. Just so you know, even though Sir Isaac Newton published his book Principia in 1687, which included his universal law of gravitation, Newton never actually was able to measure the universal gravitational constant with any real accuracy. It wasn't until 1798, more than 100 years later, that a British scientist named Henry Cavendish performed the first accurate measurements of the universal gravitational constant. He used a large torsion balance to measure big G. The torsion balance had two stationary 350-pound lead balls and suspended on a metal wire a six-foot-long horizontal wooden rod with two 1.6-pound lead balls on either end of the wooden rod. The whole contraption was put in a large box and Henry Cavendish used telescopes to observe the slight motion of the two 1.6-pound lead balls toward the other 350-pound lead balls. You know what? Let's talk through some qualitative examples of Newton's universal law of gravitation. Let's start with a completely empty universe. To be clear, right now, nothing exists in this universe. Now let's add one can of dog food. Notice because there is only one object in this universe, there is no force of gravitational attraction because it takes two objects, mass one and mass two, to have a force of gravity. Without a second mass, there is no force of gravity. Now let's add a second can of dog food. Notice now each of these cans of dog food has a force of gravitational attraction pulling it towards the other one. The force from can one on can two is pulling can two toward can one. And the force from can two on can one is pulling can one toward can two. Please realize these two forces form a Newton's third law force pair. 
The force from can 1 on can 2 is equal and opposite to the force from can 2 on can 1. If there is nothing else in this universe, wouldn't the two cans of dog food accelerate towards one another? Well, that is a valid point. Yes, the cans would accelerate towards one another. However, right now, I am just concerned about making sure you understand the forces. So let's, let's not worry about the accelerations of the objects. Now let's add a third can. Bobby, what additional gravitational forces exist in this universe? Well, can 1 is pulled toward can 3, and can 3 is pulled toward can 1. Oh, and can 2 is pulled toward can 3, and can 3 is pulled toward can 2. Correct, and, and let's add a fourth can. Billy, what additional gravitational forces exist now in this universe? Well, can 4 interacts with the other three cans, so cans 1, 2, and 3 are each pulled toward can 4, and can 4 is pulled toward cans 1, 2, and 3. That is correct. Okay, let's be done adding cans of dog food to our universe. Uh, Mr. P? Yes, Billy? Now that we have two equations for the force of gravity, how, how do we know which one to use? Yeah. That is a fair question. Bo, remind me, the original force of gravity equation, the force of gravity equals the mass of the object times the acceleration due to gravity. That is the force of gravitational attraction between what two objects? That is the force of gravity between an object and the Earth. Remember, the object needs to be near the surface of the Earth. If the object is in orbit, then that equation is not valid. Yeah, right. that's a, uh, yeah. Correct. I, I prefer to realize we could be on a planet other than Earth and identify that this equation is a planet-specific equation. We can find the force of gravity, or the weight of any object, on a planet using this equation. Newton's universal law of gravitation is always correct. We can always use this equation to solve for the force of gravity which exists between any two objects. Which means we don't actually need the equation, force of gravity equals object mass times acceleration due to gravity. However, in recognition that we often need to determine the weight of objects here on planet Earth, we have the shorter, much easier to use equation. Thank you very much for learning with me today. I enjoyed learning with you.